We will look back on these periods and of time and go, that was utter greatness that we were witnessing from Max Verstappen. But we've seen gaps like this before through the Mercedes era, you know, Michael Schumacher winning, Sebastian Vettel winning. We, we know that this happens and I think we do have a change of regs in 2026. They have yes. to get those right, they have to get those nailed. In terms of Australia, we've got a different track once again to what we saw in Saudi Arabia and what we saw in Bahrain. So I think we haven't yet seen the true pecking order for the season. We haven't yet established exactly how fast um, or slow each each car really is. I think there's so much bubbling under the surface to, to keep us interested and invested in. Obviously, you mentioned the domination last year. It's continued this year with Max mm -hmm. doing his thing. Um, how do you look at this? I mean, I guess for some people, it's, it's a tech race and they're like, oh, great, you've got the best car, you've designed the best machine, congratulations to you, you know, this is incredible. Others that perhaps, I dare say it, you know, the drive to survive generation, generally speaking, are probably a bit like, well, we saw 2021 and that was amazing. And then what is this? Mm. What, what do you think? What's your take on it? I mean, how, is it bad for the sport? Is it good for the sport? Are you indifferent? Where do we sit with F1 at the moment? So I think certainly last season, there came a point where we had to just stand back and go, what we are witnessing is a period of such dominance and expertise and genius and greatness and driver skill that we have to, we won't necessarily feel it now or one doesn't feel it when you're living through it, but we will look back on these periods and of time and go, that was utter greatness that we were witnessing from Max Verstappen, who is a driver you basically have both driver and car at the moment in a league of their own. You, yeah, you see absolutely. the way that Sergio Perez is unable to match what Max Verstappen is doing in that car. And that is, that is nothing against Sergio Perez. That is, that is to do with how much Max is extracting from himself and from the RB20. You see what Adrian Newey has done to push forward the regs once again, to push forward the design element of that car once again, to do what Mercedes tried to do to their car in 23 and failed. It, what we're seeing is extraordinary, but I appreciate that it isn't necessarily altogether thrilling when you've got one driver up the road winning by 22 seconds and kind yeah. of the best of the rest is is the exciting bit. And it is exciting. I still think yeah, the fights absolutely. that we have for P3 and P2 and even for P10, you know, the fight for the <laughs> points is, is so exciting. And when you know the people in the paddock, you can really appreciate and understand how much those points or a point means to a team, it is absolutely huge. And so I get invested in, in that, but I appreciate that isn't gonna necessarily grab the headlines. Um, and so I think that's where I'm at. I think we will look back and appreciate this for what it is. And it is extraordinary what we're witnessing. That car, Max Verstappen broke nearly every record going last year, you know, the team did as well. Um, but yes, I would, I wouldn't mind a more competitive race come the Australian Grand Prix, for example, or the Japanese Grand Prix. I, I wouldn't wouldn't mind to see at least a sort of Vegas, Las Vegas style three way fight for the win, yeah. um, rather than one driver or two drivers up the road. Um, but we've seen gaps like this before through the Mercedes era. You know, Michael Schumacher winning, Sebastian Vettel winning. We we know that this happens and I think we do have a change of regs in 2026. They have yes. to get those right. They have to get those nailed. Um, and I think the other thing is the driver market is going to serve as an unbelievable background <laughs> distraction for this season. We already have Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari. We already have rumors that Max will be going to Mercedes. We've, you know, Carlos Sainz has got to go somewhere. Oli yeah. Behrman has just shown that he well and truly deserves a seat in F1 at just 18. I think there's so much bubbling under the surface to, to keep us interested and invested in. But the racing, yes, I wouldn't mind a more competitive race for sure. Looking ahead to the rest of the season, we've got Australia coming up, got a little break before then. But what do you see as the storylines unfolding? Obviously, Max is going to continue to dominate to a degree. We, we know that's pretty much a, a given. But are there any dark horses, any surprises? Can you gaze into your crystal ball and give us any clues what you think is going to happen for the rest of the year? Interesting. Well, as I say, I think driver market is going to be crucial. That is going to be one of the key themes bubbling under, and it's going to spill out onto the track because you have got something like 12 drivers out of contract who are going to be fighting for a seat. And not all of them are going to be at the same team they're at right now. Not all of them are going to be on the grid. That's for sure. So we are going to lose drivers from the grid for this season. I, I believe we will. Um, 
And so that that is something that I think we need to follow. That's a really kind of key story. And it's going to it's going to raise its head at each race weekend as well. Um, I think equally, look, I know the battle for P2, um, it is only the battle for P2, but I still think it's fascinating. And I think one of the key things from last year is that we didn't have any one team consistently P2. And I think that's part of the reason we saw such a gulf or such a gap to Red Bull is because for a few races, it was Aston Martin, then it was Ferrari, then it was Mercedes, then it was McLaren. So you had four teams who were very close together and sort of taking points away from each other while Red Bull continued to pull away. So I think if we establish kind of a, a P2 that can fight Red Bull, and I'm, I can see that in Ferrari and, and what they're achieving so far, and how close they are, they have got, you know, so far, and they're close in qualifying, they're knocking on the door. Um, they certainly look to have improved their race pace. That's crucial. In terms of Australia, we've got a different track, once again, to what we saw in Saudi Arabia and what we saw in Bahrain. So I think we haven't yet seen the true pecking order for the season. We haven't yet established exactly how fast um, or slow each each car really is. Another sort of good storyline for the season as well as Haas. I think they came out the blocks in testing and said, don't look at us. We're going to be really slow. We're right at the back. Don't worry about us. And they've been brilliant and yeah. strategically brilliant in Saudi. Yes, very much so. In Kevin Magnussen backing everybody up to give Amazing. Nico Hulkenberg that point. And I think they're quick in qualifying, yes, as they were last season, but they also have solved that perennial issue with their race pace and their tyre deck. Or so we think, like I say, just two races. So... We'll see in Australia where we've got a different um, a track with different characteristics once again. So that will give us a bit of a fuller picture of what to expect. But I think, yeah, keep a lookout for Hass on the charge, driver market and the fight for P2. Yeah, no, it's, it's it, there's so many fascinating narratives, not not least, you know, Alpine, a works team, right. you know, holding, <sighs> propping oh up the uh, the back of the grid, which is, 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 you know, bizarre as it is disappointing. Yeah. 